Hey y'all, it's your girl Mecca. I'm back again with another devotional for tonight. I am really looking forward to this one. I'm really excited. So let's just go ahead and dive right in. So y'all know I have my trusty book here. And so today we're talking about self-criticism. And I think that is like a major, major topic for a lot of people. Um, just for a lot of us in general, right? How many of you, you know, out there by a show of hands, you know, will sit there and critique yourself. You will sit there and pick apart yourself, whether it's your body physically, you know, mentally, or just the actions that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. In some way, shape, or form, you are criticizing yourself. Um, and it's actually turning yourself down emotionally like you become depressed or you are self-destructing you're self-destructive you see what i'm saying so it's actually really detrimental to you and yourself so pretty much how can we you know like what are some well first <laughs> first i was trying to get that out first let's break it down right so um, we set unrealistic expectations for ourselves and are critical of ourselves when we don't live up to them. How many of you guys have a list of like things that you thought you were going to accomplish by a certain age or thought you were going to have certain things by a certain age? I know I have. I honestly thought I would be way, like further along than I currently am. And this message also ties into what we talked about last time, which was the fear of the future and how we have to think about what is currently good in our lives. And that's the same thing with when we are self-criticizing ourselves, right? So we have to, we have to stop doing that, y'all. <laughs> Because especially comparison, that's where comparison comes in, where we're like, okay, well, we're the same age, yet she is all the way at the finish line, and I still haven't even started running yet. You know what I mean? But how about maybe she's in a different, y'all, I was in track and field in high school. So maybe she's in a different group than you are. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, that could be, you know, a reason for it too. Either way, it still pertains because we have to look at what is good in our life at the moment right now. No, we are not where we want to be or where we thought we would be or where, you know, we should be, right? But at the same time, we are exactly where we should be. Amen. So what is self-criticism? Well, let's break down that definition, shall we? So <laughs> self-criticism is a destructive force that can lead to discouragement discontent and depression well when you bring in those things what are you going to do you're automatically going to want to compare yourself to someone else and you're going to then go into a downward spiral and it's going to be hard and really difficult to get out of that so how do we counter the self-criticism you self-evaluate and that's what this little trusted book here says i highlighted a couple things so self-evaluation is a constructive, beneficial exercise that helps us recognize the areas where we need to improve. Hello. So that's what we have to focus on. Okay, well, this is an area where I need a little bit of help on. This is the area where I could do better on. This is the you know, this is the area where I excel in or I do really well in. Um, so if you look at, if you take the time to evaluate yourself and learn yourself, y'all see Papa, he's trying to get comfortable, um, where you try to take the time to learn yourself and evaluate yourself, that's better than criticizing yourself. Um, you know, again, because you're just make you're just digging yourself a hole, you know, and we don't want that. Okay. So, what do we need to do? We need to build ourselves up by, I'm just going to read it verbatim. We need to build ourselves up by meditating on and speaking aloud God's word. Meditating on the word of God. Speaking aloud. It says it here. Speaking aloud. Remember in the first video, we talked about how you have to speak out loud. Voice. Using your voice. <laughs> okay. And so the next part, it says, 
God is not in heaven criticizing you. He's not. He's not sitting there up there saying, mm, well, Mecca did this wrong. Let me write that down. Mm, she didn't do that today. Let me write that down. Mm, she sure ain't been doing this correct. He's not doing that. He is not in heaven sitting there writing down everything, every mistake, every wrong thing that I've ever done in my life, even the things that I think in my mind. He's not sitting there doing that. Instead, God is your biggest cheerleader. He is your number one cheerleader. You know how like in modern day, guys are like, well, I need, I need my woman to be my number one cheerleader. Or the girl is like, yeah, I'm, I'm my man's cheerleader, you know, and that's great. You know, you need a, a, a personal cheerleader here on earth too. You know what I mean? But know that people change. God does not change. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He is the same whereas people change one minute they your cheerleader the next they sitting there looking at you like you crazy god is not like that and it says here that he is at the head of a great crowd of witnesses cheering you on that means that it's not just god cheering you on it's his angels cheering you on up in heaven it's your other loved ones up there cheering you up in heaven they, like it's a whole crowd of people cheering you on in heaven and god is the first one out of that whole crowd that is cheering you on honey that should make you feel some kind of special it should make me feel special to know that god is cheering me on and he wants the best for me trust me we have scripture to back all of this up and we'll get to it he says god's word has strength god's word has direction god's word has promises for you if you seek them out ask the lord to help you in areas you need help to improve on if you know for example i can't swim to save my own life nor nobody else's i can barely doggy paddle <laughs> so <laughs> You know, that's an area that I definitely need improving on because I don't want to have a tsunami happen and I drown instantly. I, I, you know, like I panic just having, getting in the pool and the water touching my face. I'm just like, I'm drowning. You see what I'm saying? So <laughs> that's something I can be like, Lord, I need you to help me improve on this. Or um, on a more serious note, Lord, I need help you know, in, you know, in doing this, this day and the fourth, you see what I'm saying? So you can say, Lord, I need help emotionally. I need help physically. Like I'm trying to lose weight. That is one area that I am trying to do. I've been trying to do since college. Okay. And I was doing very well in college at losing weight. I sure was. I sure was. I had a good time. I said, oh, I look good, right? You know, then after college, you know, you kind of get a little lax and, you know, you get a little comfortable, you know. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, that's another area that's physically that I'm just like, okay, that's something I want to, you know, I need to get help on. Uh, you know, spiritually, I ha I remember praying to God saying, Lord, I want you to use me as your servant. I want to be your humble servant. Use me and I want you to be able to trust me. And one of those, and I pray that prayer, and one of those ways to get God to trust me, to know that he can count on me and that he can trust me with any assignment that he has for me is by me digging into his word. When you read God's word, you get to learn more about who he is and how much he loves you and cares about you. And you're gaining that confidence in yourself because you're like, okay, if this is how God feels about me, then I know I'm the junk. I know I'm a diamond, right? Because you see, you're learning here from the word that God looks at you as a diamond. He created you as a masterpiece and a masterpiece is the highest value that there is right he created a masterpiece in the art world a masterpiece is like whoa you know what i mean that's one of a kind each and every one of us out here god created us to be one of a kind that means there's no one else out here like you there's no one else that can compare to you you can't compete on your level because nobody can be on your level right because we're all different we're not all the same we're all a masterpiece by his spirit and through his word, you can accomplish anything. You sure can. All right, so now 
let's get into scripture. Also, too, I, there there are prayers with each one of these. And what I'm going to do um, for this video, because I really liked what this prayer was, I am going to put it in the video. And make sure that when you pray it, you um, always end it in Jesus' name. Amen. And we talked about that last video because that's what scripture says. You cannot get to the Father except through Jesus. And so what that means is that you have to, whenever you pray, you have to end it in, in Jesus' name so that the Lord can hear your prayer. So I'll put it here so that you can say it out loud and pray that prayer because it was a really good prayer. And I want you guys to be able to get fed as much as possible spiritually. So let's get some scripture in there to back this up, right? To back this message up. <laughs> Repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, help me not to be judgmental or condemning toward myself, but to forgive myself just as you have forgiven me. Let me not be critical about my shortcomings. Help me to realize that I am not perfect and never will be, and that is okay. You still love me anyway. Show me how to love myself. Give me grace and mercy to know that I am a work in progress and to be kind to myself. When I make a mistake, help me not to get down on myself. Teach me not to get discouraged or lose heart when I miss the mark. You said you would never condemn me. Help me to, to follow your example. Teach me to encourage myself in you. Give me confidence to live my life free from criticism and condemnation. Continue the good work that you started in me and help me to complete that work in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, y'all. So in the prayer, it says, give me grace and mercy to know that I am a work in progress and to be kind to myself. So I said, well, hmm, let me look up what does grace mean, right? You know, let's look up. Grace means undeserving favor, okay? Let's find scripture to back that up right so and y'all know i've gotten better at marking the pages i'm you know this is the top of the lid to my candle i had to find stuff to help bookmark you know do what you can um and so okay here we go so to back up the meaning of grace and again it's undeserving favor so ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 through 10 and it reads god saved you by his grace when you believed and you can't take credit for this it is a gift from god salvation is not a reward for good things we have done so none of us can boast about it for we are god's masterpiece he has created us anew in christ jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago Okay, so if you're sitting there um, bad-mouthing yourself, right, and you are picking yourself apart, you got to remember that God has been gracious to you. He has blessed you and placed his hand of favor over your life, and you didn't do a thing to deserve it. Why? Because you don't deserve it. None of us do. I, I'll give you proof. Let me go let me go to the other scripture. I told you I got scripture to back all this up now. If I can find it. <laughs> let me find it because I'm going to tell you. So the scripture to back it up, a proof that we do not deserve grace and God's favor, is Romans chapter 6 verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. So what does that mean? Mecca, I'm confused. What are you trying to say? What I'm trying to say is that without God's grace, all of us, when we die, will go to hell. That's plain and simple. Why? Because we are sinners. Because when we were born, we came out of the womb, we were sinners. 
That's why you have to be a born again creation. That's why it said in the word anew. All right. When you have some time, read Romans chapter 6, verses 14 through 23. Okay. And verse 14 says, Sin is no longer your master, for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. Well, then, since God's grace has set us free from the law, does that mean we can go on sinning? Of course not. That's what the Bible it literally says. Of course not. With an exclamation point. Don't you realize you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey? You can be slave to sin, which leads to death. Or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. Thank God. Once you were slaves to sin, but now you wholeheartedly obey this teaching we have given. Okay. Now we're at verse 18. Now you are free from your slavery to sin, and you have become slaves to righteous living. Because of the weakness of your human nature, I am using the illustration of slavery to help you understand all of this. Previously, you let yourselves be slaves to impurity, and lawlessness, which led ever deeper into sin. Now, impurity, um, look it up. Because <laughs> the Bible talks about a lot of impurities. So if you look up impurities, Bible verses, a whole bunch will come up, I promise you. Um, this is verse 19. Now you, now you must give yourselves to be slaves to righteous living so that you can become holy. Verse 20, when you were slaves to sin, you were free from the obligation to do right. Verse 21, and what was the result? You are now ashamed of the things you used to do, things that end in eternal doom. But now you are free from the power of sin and have become slaves of God. Now you do those things that lead to holiness and result in eternal life. And then verse 23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. I told y'all, I'm not making this stuff up. It's right here in the scripture. It's in the Bible, the word of God. <laughs> now this is the New Living Translation version. And I know last time we spoke a little bit about the different versions in the Bible. So um, hopefully you guys have taken a look to see which version you like. You are God's creation. And he loved you so much that he gave to you. He bestowed upon you, right? We talked about this, a gift. Before we talked about with um, in, in John <laughs> that Jesus bestowed upon us before he um, died and rose again on the third day. Before he did that, he left us with the gift of peace in our mind and in our heart. Well, this gift is the gift of allowing us to have grace, knowing that we don't deserve it. And to be able to have that eternal life is by going through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Because again, scripture says, whoever comes to the Father must come through me first, which is Jesus. Okay, so Mecca, what does all this have to do with self-criticism? Well, it has a lot to do about self-criticism because like we just read in the word that if God made you and created you as a masterpiece, then why are you speaking so lowly of yourself? Why are you not speaking kind words about yourself? When people ask you, you know, how, how was your day? They come to you and say, hey, how you doing? And some people don't care to know. They just say, that's just how they say hello. You know, people be like, hey, they be like, how you doing? That's how black people speak. You know what I mean? Hey, how you doing? You know, and that's just a greeting. But then there are other people who genuinely ask you, hey, how are you doing today? And you say, oh, I'm doing all right. Oh, I can't complain. I'm, I'm doing fine. And really and truly, you have a list of things in your head of how you really feel. Let's go to scripture. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, it says, Don't use foul or abusive language. 
Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Y'all, that's for yourself too. Not only should you not be using certain language and words towards other people and how you speak to other people or about other people, but that goes for yourself as well. You should not be speaking lowly of yourself. You should be sitting there speaking highly of yourself. When you talk about yourself to other people, when you brag about yourself, obviously don't sit there and be cocky. Now, God does say in the Bible to be humble, to humble yourselves. But at the same time, you shouldn't be Christian criticizing and critiquing yourself every second of the way again look at what are some things that you are good at and what are some things that you need to improve on your words have power right so you want to be very aware in how you speak about yourself and to yourself i know some people um put up like sticky notes and encouraging words on their mirrors or just like around their house and they're constantly saying that um until it gets ingrained in their mind that's a great idea there's nothing wrong with that that's actually a thing that you should do some people put scripture there some people put affirmations whatever it is do that to help instill into your mind and that's a way to renew your mind from those negative thoughts like we spoke about in the last video right what is a way to renew your mindset a way to do that is by making notes having to repeat it over and over until you start to until you start to believe it your words have power what you say over yourself and what you say over other people is very important and you have to take that very seriously after a while, you're going to start believing it and then you're going to start acting that way. That's right. That's like a lot of people who get into relationships and they'll sit there, you know, they get into an argument with their significant other and then, you know, they come out and say, well, that's why you a piece of ass. I have just been watching movies and seeing videos on Instagram. I have always made a mental note in my head never to say that to a man because men already go through a lot of hardships you know from day to day you know just outside in the world and also you know they don't want to have to deal with that when they come home and then for their own female to say to them you a piece of ass how do you know that maybe you know how do you know that they weren't called that when they were younger and that's a trigger for them and so now they've shut down and they're wallowing and they're spiraling. And I'm not just talking about men, you know what I mean? I'm just saying, I'm just giving an example of be careful with your words. You know what I mean? That's just like with how, you know, you're speaking with your friends and how you get together with your friends, you know, or, you know, how you speak with your, how you speak to your children, right? You always want to be careful. You always want to speak life over yourself and over other people you interact with um, because your words have power. For God to sit there and say blatantly in scripture, don't use foul or abusive language and let everything you say be good and helpful so that you can encourage other people. He said that for a reason, right? Let's go to Philippians 1 chapter 6 and I am certain that God who began a good work within you Remember, we talked about that last time, too. And he created you to be a masterpiece. <clears throat> Excuse me. That means you are a daughter of the Most High King. You are a son of the Most High King. You better walk in your authority. You better sit there and walk in that confidence, that God confidence. You best to know whose you belong to, whose you are and who you belong to. Do you hear me? So instead of us sitting here comparing and saying, okay, well, I should be further along than I am or, you know, nothing is going right in my life. Well, what is going right in your life? What do you like about yourself? <clears throat> what part of your body do you like or love? Right? You know, like for me, I, I actually like my country accent. I sure do. But what's hilarious is that my entire family makes fun of me and they're like, Mecca, how do you, how is your accent countryer than ours? You know what I mean? They like, how, how is that possible? And you up in the city, I say, you know what? That's all right. Because 
at the end of the, you see what I'm saying? So, and that's just to make light of this situation, you know, to make you be like, you know what? She has a point. You see what I'm saying? Like, what is there? That's something that I, I really, I really absolutely like about myself is my accent. People make fun of me. I've had people tell me, girl, you sound like you're from Texas. Uh, I had one person say that I sound like I was from Mississippi. I said, now, I know my accent is not that thick to say that I sound like I'm from Mississippi. I said, that was a new one. Now, Texas, I've heard. Um, Tennessee, I've heard. Alabama, I've heard a lot. But they said Mississippi. I said, now, you know better. <laughs> You know, so, you know, but what's something that you like about yourself? Maybe it's your eyes. Maybe it's your nose. Maybe it's your hair. If you have long hair or short hair, you know, whatever you like, you know, maybe it's certain outfits that you like to see yourself in. Well, buy more of those outfits that you like to see. Maybe it's your mind and the way you think that you like. Now, if you're thinking it's left all the way in left field, like we talked about in the last video, then you may want to be reevaluate that, but <laughs> you know what I mean? But the all in all to say y'all that if God created you as a masterpiece and he loves you so much, therefore walk in that, walk in that confidence and knowing that God created you to be the best you and he loves you as, as who you are who you are right now, undeserving of his love, undeserving of his favor, undeserving of his grace, yet he still loves you. Even though we're all messed up, he still loves us in spite of that, right? And he sent his son Jesus to die for us, to make us better so that we may walk in righteousness. And there's another scripture that I want to read to y'all that says um all scripture this is second timothy chapter 3 verses 16 and 17 all scripture is inspired by god and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives it corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right <clears throat> god uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work I mean, come on, that tells you everything you need to know right there. And another one that I have for you is 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight for the true faith. Hold tightly to the eternal life to which God has called you, which you have declared so well before many witnesses. Y'all, he loves you. And he wants nothing but the best for you. Therefore, watch your words. Speak kindly about yourself and to yourself and speak kindly to others because it's uplifting. How you live your life can encourage and uplift someone else as well, right? Lead by example. Be an example. Um, Try to make sure that I went over everything. If you guys have any questions or if you want to talk about this some more, please comment below. We can definitely discuss this more. Um, but that's pretty much all I have for you guys. Um, thank you so much for watching. If this is your first time, welcome. I hope that this spoke to you um, about needing to speak, be kinder to yourself. Show yourself grace. Show yourself mercy. Be patient with yourself. Um, le learn to love yourself. Um, this, these are just, you know, small scriptures to show you how much God loves you, right? He, he's showing you wonderful grace. Um, <laughs> it says it right here. Uh, God's law was given so that all people could see how sinful they were. But as people sinned more and more, God's wonderful grace became more abundant. Now, that's something right there. God loves you so much, honey. He sent his son to die for your sins. Why? Because the wages of sin is death. Okay? So, anyway, y'all, I could sit here and talk about this more and more all day long. Because um, this, this message was ju just as much as it was for you. It was for me. It touched me. It blessed me. Um, 
and the more and more I dive into the word, the more and more I'm learning to love myself and um, learning more about God. You know what I mean? Um, so I thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and, and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, our next video will be about, because I did go ahead and mark it. Seeking the approval of others is our next one. So, ooh la la, that'll be something, right? Um, let me go ahead and pray for us, pray us out, and then I'll see y'all for the next video. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for our devotional about self-criticism. Lord, I pray that you help us all to be confident, that we walk in our confidence, that we walk in our authority, Lord, that the more we dive into your word and learn to know more about you, that we learn to know more about how much you love us and how much you have sacrificed for us and how much you um, have given to us undeservingly. And I pray, Lord, that we walk in that confidence, that God confidence um, each and every day, that we lead by example and that we watch our words and how we speak about ourselves and to ourselves so that we can lead by example and be examples for other people and for the younger generation. Lord, we pray that you get the glory and honor out of all of this. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video.